Welcome back to Can It Be a Mead? This is episode seven. This is the series where we let two wheels decide the ultimate ingredients for a mead. And each wheel has very odd and regular ingredients on it, and the combination of the two hopefully will create something great. But that's up to us. Let's spin our first wheel to figure out what we have to do, or what we have to use, for our first ingredient. All right, so let's see what our first wheel is going to be. I'm gonna shuffle this. And here is our first ingredient. We are gonna have to use a banana. Oh man, this could be interesting. <laughs> We're gonna have to make a banana flavored mead, which I have roughly done in the past, but not to a great avail. Let's get the second wheel. Oh Lord, banana. And here's our second wheel, our second ingredient. We have banana and we have Oh no, nutmeg, banana and nutmeg. That could work. How am I gonna, hmm. The banana side is tough. To get a banana flavor out of a mead, we're gonna have to use a lot of bananas. And nutmeg, this is gonna be a very spice, well, a very um, pastry-esque mead. Okay, banana and nutmeg, I'm all for it. Let's. Let's go buy some ingredients. All right, I've gone out, bought my ingredients, made my plan. Here's the recipe I'm using. Um, I'm gonna adjust it a little bit, but basically I am using three pounds of avocado blossom honey, which is pretty roasty and dark. I think it'll be good for this. Um, water up to a gallon. I am using the OYL, the Omega Yeast Labs Bonanza, which is supposed to produce banana-esque esters. And then I am also going to add bananas. So now here's how I'm planning to add the bananas. Uh, in the primary, I am going to add the seven bananas I have here. They look pretty gross, but I peeled them and froze them to hopefully produce a better flavor. And in the secondary, I'm adding the peels, or at least three or four of the peels. Now I'm doing it backwards because I want the a bulk of the, the flavoring to come from the primary. And I think the peels will add a little flavor, but mostly tannic value in the secondary. So I have all my things, I have my water, all this stuff. We're gonna go ahead and mix in our ingredients. So let's get started. Okay, so I'm gonna add, I put these bananas in a bag to make them easier to get out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick this right inside of this mead. Hopefully it doesn't overflow. So now that the bananas are in here, we're gonna go ahead and let this start fermenting. The starting gravity for this is 1.098. I'm assuming that the bananas add one whole point of gravity, meaning that we are going to be setting at 1.108 as the starting gravity. Now I will be adding some yeast nutrient. I am going to add some Fermate O, which is an organic um, nutrient source. I'm gonna go ahead and put that in. We're gonna let this start fermenting and come back after the primary. All right, here's a quick update on the banana and the nutmeg. It is currently at 1.020. We are about nine days in. This is what it looks like. You can see that the bananas themselves, I've been in this bag and I've been doing like a jerry rig system. I'll show you in a second to try and keep them down. Um, but this is clearly fermenting, it's doing pretty well. This is my, again, very ghetto system to keep these bananas pushed down. So I've literally been putting this tub on top, putting that there which submerges the bananas. And again, someone's gonna scream at me, but I couldn't get the bananas to sit with marbles. And then I put this on top and it submerges them. So let's continue to let this ferment and I'll be back. Okay, so let's go ahead and taste test it. It's definitely got that um, ripe banana aroma. Definitely get some, a little yeastiness on the nose. There is a, some honey character that's nice, you know? I'm curious. Oh yeah, it's got some, got a little honey character, definitely a little bit of sweetness, got some banana taste to it. Not a super strong one, it's kind of like a, a little bit of an unripe banana. It's definitely like there. I do think the nutmeg will be very interesting. I also do believe it's done fermenting, so let's go ahead and move on to our next step. Okay, so here's my next step. I'm actually not gonna rack it off of this. I do believe that I'll only leave the 
banana in there, the banana peels that I have here. So this is about four or five banana peels that I've frozen in for like a week or so. I don't really care so much about leaving it on the leaves of this. Now I have my same bag from before and I'm gonna try and weigh down the bag with some marbles. So let me go ahead and jerry rig something real fast so we can put the banana peels in. I think banana peels will provide tannin and possibly some banana flavor, we'll find out. These are frozen, but to be honest, I don't really care that much about the freezing side of this. Okay, so let me see if I can weigh these down enough to submerge them completely. All right, so my bag here is gonna be submerged completely. The banana peels will stay submerged, so I don't have to worry about that. It was sanitized, all those things. Okay, so now I'm gonna let this let these sit in here for maybe a week or two, and then we're gonna come back and put in the banana, or not sorry, the banana, the nutmeg to try and add that. We'll rack it over and those things. But let's see what happens after a week of banana peel flavoring. All right, here we are. It's been about nine, 10 days since we put these peels on. Let me show you what they look like and take them out. So here is what our peels look like. Of course, they're in the bag. They were submerged the whole time. I don't really like the dripping because it adds oxygen, but we're gonna go ahead and move this out of here. All right, so now let's get a taste test. Ooh, it's definitely got a banana aroma and it's different than before because now I have more of a, um, this feels like a weird thing to say, but I can smell the peel. I get some more body off the aroma, which doesn't make sense, but ooh, yeah. If you've ever bitten into a peel for whatever reason, you know that it tastes different <laughs> than the actual banana. There's definitely more body to this thing. It, uh, it's not super sweet. It does need some sweetness to help pronounce what we're going for now. Okay, I think it's pretty good. I think that, and I pulled this out ahead of time because I wanted, I thought I was gonna use it. I'm gonna add some lactose to this. It's a non-formidable sugar that also will uh, fill out some of the, the body of it. Even though it's pretty full body, I think the lactose will help sweeten it, sweeten it slightly and also um, give it that body. So let me go ahead and rack this off of here into here. All right, so here's what I've done. Um, I wanted to do a little A-B testing. In one of them, in this one, I put maltodextrin and tried it. In this one, I put maple syrup. In this one, I put regular clover honey. What I found is that the maltodextrin didn't add enough sweetness, it added body, but it didn't add sweetness to pronounce the sweet side of the banana that I want. So it was still kind of like a lame banana. Not a huge fan. The um, maple syrup is a kind of, it's. More, um, more interesting in my opinion, because it adds sweetness, which appeals to the banana side. It adds a little body, and it also adds its own like warming character that's not, not too bright, but sweet. And then the last one I did was honey, and it was just, I mean, it's just straight honey, sugary to your face, um, almost appealing to the bake side of a banana. Not what I want. So I'm not gonna do maltodextrin. I'm gonna use maple syrup. If you know much about mead making, you know that because this is not currently stabilized, um, if I put new sugar in, there will be re-fermentation. We don't want that. So I am gonna use potassium sorbate and metamisulfite, which are two uh, preservatives, to halt the fermentation. You can do this in other ways, pasteurizing and such. If you're interested, go check those out. Now, I'm gonna go and, and uh, add the sorbate and metamisulfite to this to stabilize it. Now that I've put this on, we're gonna go ahead and put the airlock back on, put it away for about 24 or 48 hours. So we'll come back and add maple syrup then. All right, so it's been about 48 hours and I uh, went ahead and just mixed in six ounces of the maple syrup. Like we said, we're using this to back sweeten. And now I want to add the nutmeg. I'm adding an eighth of a teaspoon of nutmeg. So let me go ahead and add that super tiny amount. So the nutmeg, We'll now sit on top of here, and it, this is ground nutmeg, so it's gonna mix in. Um, I'm hoping that that's not too much nutmeg. We're gonna find out. I'm gonna let this sit for a little while longer. We'll come back and see how the nutmeg and the everything else are going together. All right, so here we are for the banana and nutmeg tasting. I have some friends from Drinking Horn Meadery to help me out here because I don't wanna be the one to tell you if this works or doesn't work. Um, so I've already explained to them what happened, um, the scene of the crime, so to speak, and now we get to try and figure out if it works or not. <laughs> so you guys, give me uh, give me some aromas. What are you picking up off of this? 
To me, it's kind of like so a, terrible at this part. Like a like a strong like a Belgian ale yeast. You know, kind of like if I was going to get um, like a Chimay or any of those monk style beers, mm-hmm. it kind of has like that banana clovey ester to it. Mm-hmm. You know, smells it smells to me like it has a strong percentage. It is. I don't, um, don't want to say, don't say hot, strong. but it has like that that ester. You know, I'm sure if you put whole bananas in there too, you're going to get that banana ester that comes with it at the same it's time. About, it's about 14, so yeah, roughly about 14. I feel like I feel like my Ooh. brain could be tricking my mouth, but I feel like I can smell the avocado blossom. Mm. Mm-hmm. A little roasty, little um, uh, earthy. I kind of like. It's got that nuttiness that we were talking about or earlier with something else. This has drastically changed from the last time I tasted it. <laughs> <laughs> Holy cow! Mm. Yeah, like the first sip, it's kind of like I don't know. Like if you you bite into a banana and it's like. Not so much like young, but I guess a little overripe has yeah. that, you know, it's not really like a sweetness, but it's almost like a, like a caramelization, like some of that honey has, or not honey, some of that, uh, you know, sugar that's in there has kind of, you know, fermented on its own or gotten ripe. Yeah. That, so I'd heard what, that. What, what did you notice with the difference between like the banana peels and the, the banana heart fruit, whatever you want to flesh differentiate? No. No. innards it, the so i think i feel like some people i don't know I, I called it the banana the meat of the banana which was like a weird substitute <laughs> the flesh. like vegan yeah <laughs> like, <laughs> so um I, I noticed that like coming off the primary that there was a um a lot of bright that the bright banana taste you get from the actual fruit itself when i put the peels to the side i'd heard that they also apply and kind of help help grow that uh, banana f- aroma, but also add tannic value. So when I put the peels in, I noticed that it had more of a body. I haven't done anything to do anything with the body to this other than throw banana peels in. And um, I do feel like I get way more of a peel taste right now than I do an actual banana fruit. And I, I don't know about you guys, if you've ever actually like bitten into a banana peel for whatever reason, it is a terrible experience. It's just mm-hmm. like, it just, I feel <laughs> gross after, but yeah, that, that's like kind of what I'm doing on your mouth. I shower yeah. immediately. <laughs> exactly. I, I feel a little bit of that with this. Um, that, I feel like the peel taste is, has grown more than the, the true fruit taste. I mean, that kind of has like the tartness to it. You know, I guess the peel is going to have like kind of that, that film, I guess if you're biting into that or eat some of that on your banana, it's kind of like filmy, you know, a little tart. The the tartness I would I, w- I was gonna say as well. That was gonna be one of the main things. It hits me right on on the front and the tip of my tongue at first, and that that young peel flavor is is yeah the the kind of the the forefront. But when you talked about not doing anything for the mouthfeel, um, that was all of a sudden my brain clicked in and I was like, oh, there's a little bit of an acidity, uh, at least mm-hmm. that I'm kind of feeling in this. And so that, uh, yeah, not knowing exactly where that comes from, but um, yeah, mm-hmm. it's, I, I, th- I was waiting for more of that, of the banana esters as in like a Hefeweizen or something like that, but it's more, it's more realistic. I like that. I like that about it. And I'm definitely getting getting the sweetness of the honey, whatever you back sweetened with it too. Um, my tongue is definitely feeling that sweetness. That's, I like the, I kind of like that, that flavor to it. Like I like the, uh, the like slightly, like the kind of tartness to it. It's delicious. It's got more of a sour it. taste. I, uh, yeah. I think that yeah, this yeah. one. Way less fake. I'm going to get some like water. Fake. With a little, with a little more sweetness, and I think possibly sweetness from maybe, um, uh, if I like molasses or even like some mm. maple syrup, something that's more rich, I think this thing would really like I, what I want to, I wish I had like, I might do it again, thrown maple syrup in to get a more warm, rich, not necessarily honey brightness and threw some graham crackers into this thing to add some more <laughs> spice yes. and to really get some like breadiness to it. I think it could be like a really interesting, good, weird mead. Would you think about B, uh, BCS at all in, in that for the sweetness and Belgian candy sugar? I had not thought about that, but it could be interesting. I haven't ever used that in a brew, so 
Oh, okay. Yeah, you're talking about the darker, like the molasses and that kind of thing. So. I really like mm-hmm. the molasses. Like you were talking earlier about the mojito, and when we just had lime and mint in there, it was like, I'm lime and I'm mint and we're freaking angry at each other. And like, they just, it didn't work. And then when we added that molasses, it like mushed the two flavors together in your mouth. And so that it was like, so I think a little molasses is a bag sweetener. Oh, that sounds pretty good to me. Yeah, I just need some richness to it. Is this, is the color of this coming from the avocado? I've never even seen avocado blossom it's, honey, but that kind of darkness, did that come in because of that? Uh-huh. It's very dark. It's very, um, it's, uh, I wish I had some to show you, but it is, it's a very dark honey. It's, you can't see, of course you can't see through honey in general, but you definitely could not even attempt to see through this one. <laughs> I highly recommend that. All right, so on this one, here's what I want you guys to do. Based off, I always base this off of my my attempt alone, what's in front of you. Of course, there are things that I wish I had done better. Um, and we just talked about the molasses idea, the maple syrup, the, uh, you know, graham cracker. Based off of this, do you think that banana and nutmeg could be a viable combination for a mead? Yeah, I would think so. I would even think if you're going to oh, yeah, do it again, 100%. maybe even bump up the nutmeg. And most of what I get is mainly the banana. Yeah. I was a little worried to go too hard with the nutmeg. And so I didn't, I didn't like actually do the, the real nutmeg thing. I used powdered nutmeg. I kind of cheated the system because I was lazy. But I'm sure that had I used fresh and done that, that it might have um, been stronger. But I agree. More nutmeg. I think a little more sweetness would have really kicked this up to a next notch. Um, I, think it's, I think it's a possibility. I don't think it's my best attempt at it. And I will... Uh, hopefully when I get free time, revisit it, but it, it seems like it'd be fun to do again. And what kind of yeast nutmeg, do you use for Nutmeg this? is a tough one. It's kind of like cinnamon. It's kind of like some of those others where like, there's like, it's really, really easy to add too much. And when you do, you just blow it out, you know? Yeah, and I wanted to avoid that. I, I was worried about that. Well, so thank you guys for your help. I appreciate you guys coming on and, and helping me decide this again. I don't want to be the one to ever say that um, my own product is the pinnacle. And I think that there are things that could have been better about this, but I, I do believe that banana and nutmeg can work. And so I, I challenge anybody listening to, to try it themselves because obviously your own experience is more valuable than watching a bunch of people taste test uh, a mead virtually. So, you know, it's, that's going to help you out. I do want to point you guys to drinking horn. Thank you drinking horn for coming on and, and helping me um, taste test this. We just recorded a podcast, which uh, you'll probably maybe have already seen with them. If not, go check it out. It's been a lot of fun, but thank you guys for helping me out. Yeah, I'm glad thank to try it out. An empty Thanks glass. For- cheers. Tasty meat. <laughs> 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 cheers. Good.